You have questions, we have answers. This is Jane Muller, and this is Ken Muller. Welcome to our show, all about real estate with Ken and Jane. Well, to start off, Jane, today is Father's Day. Happy Father's Day! So we want to wish a happy Father's Day to all the hardworking、uh, dads out there.、Um, Yours truly, and、uh, that's right, and Joe and, and Ken. Yes, happy thank, thank you, Father's Day.、Uh, thank yes. you. Yes. So we have with us as our guest today, Joe Urcioli of Crown Mortgage, to give us a market update and what's hot and what's new. Joe, welcome to our show. Thanks for having me, Ken and Jane. Ah,、uh, we're excited. It's our pleasure. So,、uh, tell us briefly about、uh, Crown Mortgage. Yeah. So、uh, we're a correspondent banker here in New Jersey.、Um, We specialize in lots of loan products. You know your typical、uh, Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, FHA products.、Um, we do everything in house. All the underwriting is done in house, so it's simple. I have a complete underwriting team and a processing team、um, that we do everything.、Um, so yeah,、uh, we have been in business now for quite some time, and、uh, I just joined. Forces with Crown Home Mortgage just a couple weeks ago, and I'm excited because I used to work for them、um, back in 2019, and now I'm back with them, so I'm very excited. All right, that's great. All right, so let's get let's talk about、uh, what's hot.、Uh, this past Wednesday, the 14th,、uh, yeah. the Fed、uh, Chairman Powell gave his speech. As expected,、uh, they did not raise the、um, the interest rates. So that's not, a good news. So they broke、Correct. the record.、Yes. They, had, they had previously raised it a historic ten times in a row. So yesterday they they did not raise it, but left the door open to future rate hikes. You know,、yeah. possibly two, two down、more. the road.、Yep. It's speculative. I guess they'll wait and see. So right now the target lending rate is somewhere at the five to five point two five. Their rate is about five to five point two five percent. So as we're half as we're in the summer now, we're in you know. Started the summer. It's kind of scary because things go quickly、yeah. when the summer starts. Before、yes. you know it, it'll be over. But so as we're in the summer now, where do you see the rates heading for the borrowers?、Um, sure. Yeah. No. Great. Great question.、Um, so right now, our interest rates are between that six and a half and seven percent mark on a thirty-year fixed.、Um, there are loan level price adjustments that can push it over seven, and sometimes maybe even under six and a half.、Um, but Right now, yesterday they didn't they didn't do any type of rate hike.、Um, they're predicting there might be two more this year. But that being said, they are predicting by the end of the year that the interest rates, what they're trying for, is to be between five and a half and six, which is a great sign because that's going to open up the market.、Um, there's going to be a lot more refinances available for people that are in that six and a half to seven range, or might even be in the low sevens. If those interest rates can get a tad under six, that's going to open up the market, and it's going to save people hundreds of dollars a month being able to refinance to do so, and it's going to open up more buyers、um, because they're going to want to purchase on that low interest rate. So right now, for the next couple months, they're predicting that they're going to stay put around that six and a half to seven range, but by the end of the year, they're hoping that they're going to dip below six.、Um, basically, we have to have a, a softer job market right now. And that's going to kind of be the telltale sign, right? And isn't it quite interesting how is everything is so relative? A year ago, if we were sitting here and 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 you said the phrase interest rates would could drop below six,、yeah. which is great, people would have looked at you like like no, you're crazy.、Yeah. But a year later, everybody gets acclimated to a high. So it's all everything in、it's、life is all is norm relative. is relatively norm. Back when、yes. Jane bought her first house, the interest rates were her rate was thirteen percent. Yes, you know, so many. I won't say how many、Ken、years. Don't of, tell them. They,、ah. You show my age. But by the way, for for the audience out there, right?、Uh-huh. I bought my house when I was in nursery, holding my milk bottle. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Otherwise, you'll know my age. Right. <laughs> and when I started,、yeah. when I first started in 1997. I was selling nine point four nine. Yeah. So、um, on a mortgage, so、uh, you know it's come full full circle. And you started when you were like fifteen, right? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Maybe seven. Get, no, maybe you couldn't seven. get your license then. You couldn't get. Yeah, you, no. You, you have to be at least what eighteen or something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. In nineteen ninety seven. Yeah.、Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, Ken, that's all your、yeah. fault. It's a Father's Day. We、right. forgive you. 
<laughs> right. But here's a very interesting thing that we're experiencing as real estate agents, despite uh, nobody saw it coming, despite the relatively higher interest rates this year compared to last year, the market, the central Jersey real estate market remains very strong. Yes. Which I guess you're experiencing the same absolutely uh, by borrower interest in in applying for loans, right? Yeah. There's still the there's still the, the need and the and the want. And the want. And, and there's the, a very large uh, buyer's pool right now. now uh, lots of pre-approvals are being done. Um, despite the interest rates to some seem high, um, but we feel that it's the norm and uh, large buyer pool. Um, so much so that there's a lot of buyers out there bidding, overbidding on homes to try to get that same cookie cutter home um, being the low inventory right now. So uh, as long as inventory grows, more and more people you're going to see start getting those homes a lot faster. Um, and there, there's going to be less bidding wars on homes right now. But um, guidelines are the same, still the same. Um, you know, more and more people I'm approving every day, which is a good thing. And uh, and they're out there searching for homes. They're putting bids on it. Um, most of them don't get discouraged. Most of them definitely want to be in, especially it being summertime right now. Everybody wants to try to be in before the school year starts in September because they want to register their child for that for that uh, new school system. You know what? This year and the last year is is totally different. Joe, right? Yeah. I still remember that I call it the uh, uh, bloody June sixteenth, right? That day, the market I think sh- they increased uh, um, seventy five basis point that day, and the market went crazy. Yes. The rate went up. So that night, I never forget that very night, three deals of mine um, just canceled. Yeah. Two in the attorney review. Obviously, the buyer didn't lock, lock in the, in the rate. rate. Otherwise, it would have <clears> been irrelevant. Yeah, yeah, they didn't because yeah. normally they wait for under contract. They will apply the mortgage lock in the rate. They didn't lock in the rate. One, in fact, we already under contract, but somehow they didn't lock in the rate. Maybe they think the rate will go even further or the uh, mistake they made or some human error forgot. Regardless, right, that buyer under contract no longer qualified. Sure. And right, the two the and the attorney review um, still qualify with a suddenly high jump rate, but that's really cut close to their comfort zone. I mean, as the buyer put it, right? I mean, I don't want to buy a beautiful home and be home poor, right? Absolutely. I don't have to think about, should I pay my mortgage or should I buy my child a pair of new sneakers yep. or a vacation or, or, you know, anything, right? Furniture, whatever. So at that time, the market was Silence after 16. I can tell you, I still remember last year, my phone, um, pretty much the only call I get is a fast trading seller. And then the buyer start to, I mean, even under contract, home inspection is tough. Everybody that, you know, try to renegotiate, try to get out. Sure. So that was really, really not fun last year. From June to December, the market definitely, my, in our opinion, in our experience, went down at least 5%, 10% in yes. Central Jersey. So thank God in January, probably everybody feel used to it, immune it, and they will come out. And the plus the inventory went down. So that's really helped uh, from January to now, June, you know, the six months has been steady. The price was steady. Let's talk one thing about the lock rate while we have Joe here as the expert. Explain how the lock rate, how the locking in the rate works and when is when the buyers typically do that in the in the the process process. and and what's the flexibility with that? Excellent question. Excellent question. So this is what I do personally. Not everybody does this, but this is what I do personally. Once you tell me that an offer was accepted on the borrower, that's when I'll register to file and I'll lock it in and I'll lock it in according to the contract, uh, uh, the, the date of closing on the contract, make sure whether it's 45 days, 60 days, sometimes even 90 days, I will make sure because the market right now is so volatile and every day it changes and fluctuates so much that I want to do a great service to the borrower and lock them in before they go any higher. Yes. So, right. and they so can lock it. Do. I'm sorry, and they can lock it in for as long up to up to up, ninety days. Up to ninety days, yeah. right? And then they could they further lock it in if they yes, wanted, if we could to go pay. a little bit for if they want to pay a um, a point or two or a premium, premium, a prepaid interest. We could do a long term lock, but the um, most of the locks nowadays are sixty days. 60 days. Yeah, the average. best rate. Otherwise, you have to pay for the privilege. Yeah. Yep. And what so. was the reason, Jane, in your experience with the clients that didn't lock in back then before the before that uh, Fed drop? Why? Because before that, the rates were still relatively 
good, but they, some of your clients still had the ex, or some of the buyers out there still had the expectation that the rates were going to go further down, even though prior I to mean, the Fed's speech, they, I mean, they can they, look at back, right? First of all, I mean, that's all my, I represent all the sellers, sellers in this case, right. right? I think, I'm not sure, I'm just guessing here, right? The possibility could be the uh, buyer, maybe first time home buyer, they may not be uh, experienced and buyer agent maybe didn't uh, even explain. I'm not saying the agent or a, lo- a mortgage officer didn't do their job. Maybe they were just, you know, and some buyers, right, right or wrong, right, some buyers wouldn't apply loan until they finish home inspection. Correct. Negotiation. And which some is loan a officers big, do that. And they were spoiled big, big, because they figured that the, the gravy train with the low interest rates was going to last forever. Yeah, so, so they just that's figured they, what they, happened. They, they took it for granted and didn't mm-hmm. and didn't bother, did, didn't consider, didn't think locking in was, was a prerequisite or, or yeah. any urgent sense yes. of urgency. Yeah. Plus, they, they jumped them. up so fast, so quickly. Yeah, what, one day. It, it, it was increments. like a, by the 75 one day. points, yep. it really was like a tidal wave. One day. Yeah, one day. So one day, three times, I thought. It was like a boom, boom, boom. That was done, right? Yes. I think that time, the uh, uh, some buyers still thinking, right? Let me. I'm on the contract, so yeah. they have a home inspection scheduled. After home inspection, they have a they have a sixty closing. Most the lender will say we can do it in thirty days, right? Correct. So, so you know, you have a one month. So you did a home. Ins- you did a, a the um uh, review, and then you have 14 days for your home inspection contingency once it was settled and then you go lock. Correct me if I'm wrong. If you lock in the rates 30 days, you may get a little better rate. A little bit better. So that's that's another, oh, that's another lesser, reason. Oh, but it's yeah. Yeah. the risk, risk alternative. If, the lesser, if you take a chance and lock it in only 30 days, but then yeah. if you lock it in 30 days, less, usually the closing is typically 45. 45. Oh, yeah. so you wait, and, you wait till you're under contract and you and you do a home inspection. That's home exactly so that's what, what happened. Yeah, so they, they did. A, they under yeah. contract did a home inspection. And After home inspection, they're waiting everything. Once it was settled, and then they gone to lock and read in thirty days and close. Yep. But but otherwise, they don't want to pay for appraisal. They don't want to to do that. Correct. But in that month, June last year, there was just like a tsunami came. The world, yeah. It's like a it world was quick. turn up. Quick. It was quick. That was quick. Yeah. And then that's why they were underwater. That's why they didn't lock in the rate because they, I mean, they you know, but what can you do? You know, The good yeah. thing is, like we talked about earlier on the way in, the consensus right now is everybody's understanding what the rates are now. I think they're understanding that they're not going to dip below 3%. And, yes. And, and <laughs> yeah, that was an artificially Finally. suppressed Finally. Due, to, yeah. due to the worldwide pandemic. Absolutely. So that's not going to happen again. Yes. yes. All right. We're going to be right back. We're going to take a short break. We'll be right back after these messages. Okay. Welcome back to our show. Today, we're joined by um, Joe Urcioli of Crown Mortgage. Uh, Joe, please share with us your uh, contact info for the listeners. Yeah. Thanks, Ken. So if anybody out there wants to contact me, they can call my cell phone at uh, 908 307 Two three seven four, or you can email me directly at uh, J Ursioli. It's spelled U R C I U O L I at Crown H M dot com. Okay, perfect, great. All right, so we covered some historic uh, events from last June. So let's go. Let's step back and let's talk about the current. Um, the pre-qualification process. Let's let's go to Mortgage 101. Talk about a little bit about the um, the debt to equity ratio. What it tip, what you look for, and then we can talk at you know at the end of the show about some of the new products you awesome. offer too. Yeah. So um, so if a customer calls me today and I have to do a pre-approval, um, I'm looking at three things. I'm looking at their credit. Um, nowadays, what we do is we do a soft pull, which is very important because we don't want to do a hard pull and have um, their scores drop. Uh, off a, a credit inquiry. So we do a soft pull for the borrower. Um, we uh, we also look at their job and their income. And then the third piece of the puzzle that we look at are the assets, um, making sure how much they have, how much they want to part with for down payment, plus closing, plus the escrow reserves for taxes and insurance. So debt to income ratio is a big piece of that with the job and income. Um, On a conventional loan, there's a front end ratio and there's a back end ratio, okay? The front end ratio is important because what that is is basically just the current, the new mortgage payment, uh, principal plus interest, plus taxes, plus home insurance on a monthly basis, divided by their gross monthly income. That 
in most cases, you want to be below 46.99 in order to get approval. Okay. The back end ratio is a total of the PITI in the mortgage plus any other outstanding debts that they have. Make believe they have an auto loan for $400 a month. We include that plus the mortgage. Um, Make believe they have student loans. We take whatever the balance is and times it by 0.5% and we add that to the debt. That in most cases don't want to exceed on a conventional loan past 49.99 and on an FHA loan you don't want to exceed it past 56.5 okay so um, that is a way to do it and 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 still get an approved eligible uh, for the borrower oh that's very interesting so you have two ratios the two front ratios. end and the back end so yep. that's quite the first point. one is just the housing um, housing part. And then the second part is the housing plus all other outstanding debts. So you could have applicants that qualify based on their ratio for the housing ratio, but because they may have multiple car loans for luxury cars, that that could put them over that 49 point whatever percent. So and then then I guess then it's a judgment call or they automatically, if they don't meet both the ratios, then it comes to the underwriter to decide. Then you just can't do it at all. You just can't do it. If it exceeds the threshold, you can't. Those are fix yeah. pretty much rigid thresholds. They have to satisfy both the both front end and the back end. And the end. back end. Back and, end. And, and I just had one recently that didn't have any debts at all, none, zero debts. But the housing that they were looking for um, uh, was too high for their income. And the debt ratio was like 52%. So both the front and back was at 52 and it can't be. It has to be below 46.99 just for the housing one. And do you remember the other one, Jane? 49. Point- I want to see if you're paying attention. <laughs> no, that, that was hard. I don't remember. I know it's 49 and 49. 49 conventional, 56 and a half FHA yeah. for the back end. Yep. I'm never be the detail one. <laughs> yeah, but you just yeah. have. But you just you just understand the concept. Concept. Conceptually, yes. you have to qualify. Right. And, and, that's and, why and, you have and, professional and like Joe to help. And them. we've covered this, and you've covered it many, many times. That's why the. You, that's why as a good agent and as a good loan officer, you always tell the buyers, please, once you're pre-qualified, don't do anything crazy and don't go out there and get another, take another car loan or another Correct. a loan on I don't know, jewelry or, or, or buy a $20,000 diamond or something. Yeah. like. I because, tell this and, story. Ooh, 20,000 diamond? I don't even know if you, well, no. I'm sure that, you No, know, I, I, I do explain because that. Because that's happened, I mean, that's happened time and time again where Absolutely. people just figure they're pre-approved. They figure, well, let's get some furniture for the house. Let's get another car. We're going to have a garage now. Let's get the, the new car and, you know, get ready. I, I, and, ha- I had uh, something even funnier. Uh, they, they bought a house and they going to close the, the end of August, you know, mid-August, right? And in July, their relative overseas came. So they would show them around. I mean, obviously, they make appointment to see the house, their new home. They're not going to close yet, but they, they, they want to let it family to celebrate with them and because the family came right and uh, when they purchased they just used their credit card uh, to purchase a lot of gift and everything sure. so and then when 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 the time comes clear to close and they're not a, almost you know almost a, didn't qualify because didn't they qualify. did a refresh so, report so quickly yeah. they have to you know pay i mean pay, get- pay that and get money from you know the, the 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 um the retirement whatever they did so they have to get that you have to pay down the um the the credit card but it take a days for that reflect on the balance Absolutely. when they pull again so we couldn't close at the end they couldn't close to early part of september so yeah, you we know, do that's... Uh, lenders. What they do is a refresh report the day before closing. It's not to see if the scores changed, but it's to see if they incurred any new debts. And mm-hmm. if they did, that may impact the credit yeah. score. I'm, I'm mm-hmm. sorry, the uh, debt to income ratio, yeah. and uh, you might have a problem with the closing then. Right. Yeah, and then it was. And like you've experienced a that, unfortunately. Yeah. Oh, I, a true, it, true story. Uh, I once had a customer that. Um, needed a new car, he got into a car accident, Mm -hmm. but he was smart enough to actually call me from the dealership, put the salesman on the phone. I asked the salesman what the new car payment's gonna be. He told me it was make-believe $350. I typed it in and he was still able to qualify. So at least the consumer listened, um, which is a smart thing. Which is smart, yeah. 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 Absolutely. Um, Also, while we're talking on good housekeeping practices, let's talk also about what else to other things like with gift letters and transferring large sums of money between different bank accounts. Yeah. Some good housekeeping practices. Then we'll talk about the new products you have. Yeah. No, I appreciate that, Ken. Um, If 
you are out there and you're thinking about buying right now, the first thing you want to do is stop transferring money from one bank account to another, from checking to savings. Um, what that does is I don't want to say it confuses the underwriter, but it makes for more paperwork for you as a borrower to get to the underwriter. Um, so stop transferring money. We can use multiple bank accounts for assets. It doesn't have to be one. So if you have make believe four different accounts and two being check-in and two being savings or a money market account thrown in, we can use all of that. What we look for is the uh, are the last 60 days of bank statements and nothing going in can be cash deposits or anything that we can't source. Yes. Okay. Right. So if you have money laying around, do not put that into your bank account um, unless it's over 60 days, because then we can't use that as a, a source of a down payment. Right. Because some some people may have cash, and they may they may decide let's let me put that cash into the account so I get it ready. Correct. They may put ten thousand in. That's literally. That's literally their cash, but yes. they can't source it, so then it gets. And a lot a of problem. time, can is the family gift as well? You know? And then you need a gift letter. I mean, and then yeah, you need a gift letter and the donor's family. bank statement yeah. showing the money coming out. Their and then, account. And then the money. Oh, you going need in. the the the, the donors, donors bank. The donors account. bank account. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. For at least fifteen days, the donors bank account showing make believe it's a ten thousand dollar gift. Ten thousand has to be coming from the donors bank statement, mm -hmm. and then we have to show the borrower's bank statement with the ten thousand and gift going in. Mm -hmm. okay. So it has to match. It Plus the gift to, letter. Yeah, yep. it, it, it all has, has to match. match. Right. Yeah. Because a lot of time uh, it happened, you know, the yeah. auntie, the uncle, the, uh, you know, yes. so they, they do yes. help. Yeah. And yeah. then you have to explain to the borrowers because they think, oh, it's a good thing when money comes in, which it is a, which is, is a good thing, but you always have to source, source it and make sure yeah. that it's accounted for. And I guess the reason is the, the lender wants to ensure that, that, that there's no liability or repayment expectation because that Correct. would throw off the debt to equity ratio. Exactly. So that's the whole, so they have to source it and have a gift letter for the file to yeah. mm -hmm. ver ver verify that it was truly a gift. Yeah. Another yeah. good housekeeping rule is if you're thinking about buying in the future or, or very soon, um, do not do not think that you're going to pay off a credit card down to zero and never use it again and call and close the account because it's a revolving history and it's a positive history. And if you ever close your credit card account, um, your credit scores are going to drop and it could drop between 20 to 40 points. Oh, my really? God. Overnight. Oh, interesting. Wow. Yes. So less isn't always better. Keep it Correct. open. Correct. Yeah. You could cut your card and never use it again, but um, do not call the liability and say, I want the account closed. Don't ever do that. That's for revolving credit only. Interesting. It doesn't matter if a car installment uh, loan is closed because we all know that once we pay off a finance installment loan, the account mm. closes automatically. That will not affect your score. It's stri strictly for revolving credit. Interesting. Very interesting. That's a news. Yeah, good that's to very a lot of great information. Yeah. Yeah. So let's now let's talk about some of these neat products we were talking about before the show started. Uh, yeah. Na namely the uh, the investor uh, uh, debt program, service debt loan. service yeah. loan that you you yep. were talking about. Yeah. So uh, what's popular right now? Um, most folks out there right now are looking to buy investment properties um, because, let's face it, even though the interest rates are higher than what the norm thinks, um, it's still very popular to buy investment properties right now. So this debt service loan is very simple. Um, we don't care about job and we don't care about income. We leave that blank on the application. As long as you as a borrower own a primary residence, you can purchase an investment property with 20% down with as little as a 640 score, 640 middle FICO score. And all we care about is that the investment property that you're looking to buy, the rent is at least a dollar more than your principal interest taxes and insurance payment. That's all we care about. So basically the rent is going to debt service the house and we don't care about the borrower's income. So it's great for the self-employed borrowers writing a lot of income off. Um, it's great for the 1099 employee. Um, and it's a it's a great product if you're looking right. for an investment. I have a question. Okay, go ahead. Yeah. Say you said it had to be a dollar more, the rent has to be a dollar more than your mortgage repayment, right? Yes. But if you buy a investment property, if that property not currently rented, say if I buy one, two, three Main Street, right? Mm -hmm. That property at the moment is self occupied. Yes. But 
I I don't know actual rain until I. That was my question yeah. too. Can you so, buy Can you buy a vacant or a self occupied or yes. a non rented property? Yes. And, and then the question, the follow up question would be, if that's the case, then how, do does, how does the lender evaluate what the what the rent will be? And no, they, great question. Um, very common question. Really common, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I appreciate that. Um, Simply put, uh, the appraisal. When we order the appraisal on the property, we're looking for the market rent. So the appraiser has to put what the market rent is on that property. And as long as that market rent is a dollar more than the customer's principal interest taxes and insurance payment, Mm -hmm. it debt services and then we're able to still close. Oh, that's right. that, and they that, can that, close with fair. the property with the investment property vacant. Correct. The, there's the expectation they don't care if that it's that's a that's Correct. a great thing. Correct. Yeah. And then getting back to the um, the requirement that the investor must own their principal residence, have a credit score of 640 or higher. Is there any amount of equity that they need in their principal residence to qualify, or they could nope. they could they, as long as they own it, as long as they have title to it, they could own it five percent of it. It doesn't matter. Yeah, the, the it doesn't of the matter. Mortgage. And and right now, what people are doing is they're cashing out on their primary residence for the 20% to put down yeah. on the investment property. We're almost out of time, but talk quickly about the cash out, uh, yeah. the other, uh, other neat program. Yep, cash out pro, uh, program, uh, cash out refi on your primary residence. If you're looking for college tuition, pay off credit cards, or even to put down a down payment on another property, whether it's a second home down the shore or an investment property, you could do a cash out refinance um, and tap into the equity on your primary residence in order to do all of those types of things. All right, that's yeah. great. Really good stuff. Uh, Joe, once again, please give your contact information. I'm sure some people will want to find yeah. out further about these programs. Thanks. So it's uh, Joe Ursioli, um, a Crown Home Mortgage, and my phone number, my cell phone is 908 307 2374. And again, my email is J Ursioli, U R C I U O L I at crownhm.com. Great, Joe. Thank you so much. Thanks for, for having me on our show. We're out of time. We'll see everyone next week. Happy Father's Day. Happy Last Father's Day. Day. Yes. <laughs> Happy Father's Day. Happy Father's Day. Yeah.